This is the Ansel BA301 car battery tester. Let's take it out of the box. In the box you get the user's manual. Here is the tool itself. The USB cable. This is a kind of an oddball but common for these type devices. USB to mini B type connector and a bag to store it in. Let me tell you a little bit about this here. Obviously it's going to test batteries. It'll test batteries that are 6 volts or 12 volts, so dual purpose in that regard. And it can test regular flooded batteries, AGM type batteries or absorbed glass mat, uh, both the regular and spiral varieties. It'll test gel batteries and also uh, EFB batteries. It'll test batteries between 100 and 2000 cold cranking amps. That's the standard we use here in the US, so that's what I'm going to be talking in this video. This particular unit has a waveform button right there that you can press at any time, and it'll show you the current waveform. That's really you can, if you're a novice with this stuff, it'll show you a wibbly wobbly graph. And you could say, okay, that looks normal. You know, if you have, if you test it when everything's normal, you will always see ripples. But if you start seeing big ripples, then you know there's going to be a problem. A mechanic can use this to point out exactly where the fault is by watching that waveform. So it's handy that the button is right there. This is going to display on its color screen the voltage, the internal resistance of the battery, the cold cranking amps as tested, the SOC or state of charge, and SOH, state of health. This is starter and alternator test built in, as well as reverse polarity protection. So if you hook the happy side up to the sad side and the sad side up to the happy side, it's not only not going to work, but nothing bad is going to happen. So that's a nice thing also. There are green, yellow, and red indicators right over here that will light up to give you an idea of the battery just at a glance. We all know what red, yellow, green means, or at least we used to, in, at least in this country. Uh, and it also has a data logging feature where it can save the last tested battery information in here. You can then hook it up to your computer with the included cable and print that information out. There's not much more to say here except to go ahead and take this out to the car to test it. So let's do that now. So operation is really easy. If your car has a little cover over the positive, which a lot of cars they do, you take that off, put the red to the red, the black to the black, doesn't matter which side you put where. I mean, uh, you know, what order you put them, I should say. Clamp that on there and the screen lights up. Now, um, you're probably going to have a hard time seeing this because the screen is reflective. That more is a function of the camera than it is in real life, because in real life I can move this, you know, like this way, if I'm looking at it, I can't see anything. But I can tilt it this way, but that doesn't jive with the camera and that. So you just have to take it on my word that everything here is a lot more readable than it really appears on camera. We're going to go ahead and hit enter on the first one. It asks for the battery location in vehicle or out of vehicle. We'll hit enter. We're going to do the battery test. We'll hit enter on that. And it says, check surface charge, turn lights on, take headlights on for about 10 seconds, and turn lights off. So let me go ahead and do that. And we'll press enter on that. Now it asks what type of battery. In this case, it's regular flooded. So we'll hit enter. It says to select the standard. Cold cranking amps is the first one. So that's what we're going to select. And now it asks what the cold cranking amp value is. Comes up with 400 there. On your battery will be a label. 
There's a label right back here, and it says 750. So now I'm going to run this up to 750. You can hold the button, it'll go quickly. We'll be there in just a moment. And press enter. It's testing. And there we go. It says state of health 85%, good but recharge. Resistance 4.54, cold cranking amps 642. Remember I said 750 before. So this battery is not quite up to where it used to be, but that's to be expected. The standard we tested against was 750, and the uh, voltage is 12.43 volts. I will preface this by saying this car doesn't go anywhere much. It had, for the first time in, oh, probably about 10 days, maybe about four miles put on it today. Like I said, it doesn't go anywhere very often. So that's kind of what we get with that. But let's go ahead and exit that. And we'll go back in. And again, in vehicle. Now we can do a cranking test. So we'll hit that. So now it says, turn off the engine before pressing enter to enter the test. The engine is off, so we're good. And it says, start engine. Okay, time was 637 milliseconds, max 13.94 volts, that's going to be important in a minute, minimum 8.29, not good, cranking low. Now, like I said before, this car really doesn't go anywhere, and it does just sit here. I don't put a charger on it or do anything. These are numbers that I do expect in this case. You will also notice there's a sticker on the battery right over here that says 7 of 22, which is July 2022. It's currently July 2024. The battery's about two years old. These days, they only last about three. In the old days, I could get nine, even ten years out of a battery, but those days are long gone, so it is what it is, and this is pretty much well expected. We can also do the charging test. So now it's doing a ripple test. And now it's saying loaded testing. It says increase RPM to 2500 revolutions per minute and keep it for 10 seconds and press enter to continue. Press enter. Now it's testing. And it says loaded 14.22 volts, unloaded 14.43 volts, ripple 0 millivolts, so that's good, and charging is normal. Perfect. And as I had stated before, the waveform button, we can press that. And now you hopefully can see on the screen there that there's a graph going across, just like that. Now, it's a little hard to tell because the screen is so small, but that is kind of normal. It is varying just a little bit up and down. And that also is normal because these values are changing ever so slightly all the time. The reason, if you listen, obviously the engine is running, but it does not run at a constant RPM. So if the RPM were, say, I don't know, 700 rpm it's not running at 700 it's running at 700 now now it's 698 now it's 713 now it's down to 685 up to 707 you know and it kind of jumps around like that so the waveform like that like i was saying a lot earlier is considered normal if we're seeing big spikes and stuff like that that's going to tell us that there indeed is a problem and i have taken the liberty of hooking the unit up to the computer and it gives us the data that we had before that we went over earlier in the video that was on the screen however 
it will also display the waveform that it had saved. Now, this is on a much larger scale that we're seeing, but if you look, there's only about 0.3 volts difference per division there. So still definitely within spec. So once again, this is the Ansel BA301 car battery tester. If you'd like to purchase this item, I'll leave a link in the video description where you can find the item available for sale on Amazon. Thanks for watching. Make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe, and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.